How's she going boys? Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's workshop again. Uh, got another little outside project to do, but it's not woodworking. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad you take along. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reposition my weather gauges. I'd mentioned in my video about uh, Hurricane Dorian that uh, I'm a member of Coco Ross. It's uh, an acronym for the Community Collaborative Rain, Hail and Snow Measurements. Uh, so Coco Ross has provided or, or gets you to, to uh, acquire, <laughs> one way or another, uh, some gauges. So anyways, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to relocate those gauges. I had them on a tree stump and, uh, well, that tree stump is getting rotten. Just about time for that tree stump, I think, to uh, be relocated. <laughs> Turn into some heat, maybe. But anyways, we're going to put up some uh, weather gauges today, so let's have a look. So there's my gauges on this old tree stump. And you can see at the bottom of the stump, she's, she's done. Anyway, this gauge right here is called evapotransferization gauge, and it measures how much uh, moisture is evaporated from the ground each day. Then alongside that is a rain gauge. And this rain gauge is an official gauge, it's four inches in diameter, but it measures precipitation. Not dew, but just precipitation that comes from the sky. So this gauge on top is my uh, weather station, it's a five-in-one gauge. Uh, I got this from Accurite. Now they make good gauges, and uh, this one seems to work pretty good for me. It's a five-in-one gauge, so it measures uh, wind speed, wind direction, temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure. And it's also wireless, so it transmits every day. Well, actually, it transmits every 12 minutes, updates the temperature. And uh, it transfers that into my computer, and I record it every day. And uh, I use that along with my Coco Ross gauges to keep track of the weather we've had here. Uh, it could be interesting to some people, but not to a lot, perhaps. But anyway, it is to me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer these gauges over to these posts on Nanny's Garden. So I'm set up right now to put the evapotransferization gauge on this post right here. And that gauge is supposed to be located 39 inches approximately from ground. So I'm going to measure up 39 inches and put a bracket on there. I think that's pretty sturdy. Okay, so here's my gauge. And what's inside this is a, it's a, I started out with a 12 inch high column of distilled water. And on the top of this, there's a ceramic disc. And I have it covered with a piece of green special material and, a, and like a paper protector over a ceramic disc that's in the top of this. And there's a wick that sort of then runs down the center of the tube into the water. And what that does is depending on the humidity in the air and whatnot, uh, water will evaporate out through here and it measures the rate of evaporation and I measure it through this sight tube here. Like this morning it was 9.8582 I think. Right now it's reading 9.82 so that must have been what it was because I only read it this morning. But anyway I'm going to take this off very carefully because I don't want to disturb it too much. So it just slides off of the holder. I'm set it there and hope it doesn't fall. And then I'm going to take this bracket off. Now, make sure this is plumb. And then remount my gauge. And uh, these two, like antenna like things up here, those are there to keep birds off the post. So, so that's 39 inches at the top there. All right, evapotranspirization gauge installed. So uh, this rain gauge has to be about 48 inches off the ground, between well, it says between three and five feet. So. This post is 50 inches tall, so I'm going to put my bracket right at the top of the post and then mount the rain gauge on it. 
So now I take my rain gauge, there's nothing in it. And the way I do this, uh, there's a funnel that you put on the top of this normally, like in the warmer months, summertime. You put a funnel on it and then there's a measuring tube that locates in the middle. If you can see in the bottom of it, there's an index for the measuring tube. And you use the funnel in the summer because it gets so hot that you could have some rain overnight, but then by the time you get out to measure it, about 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning, there could be some evaporate from it. So you should use the funnel in the summertime, which will funnel all the moisture down through a tiny hole into the measuring tube, and that way it minimizes the chances of evaporation. But in the wintertime, I use this for measuring snow too. So you take the funnel out because of course the snowflakes have a hard time funneling down through it. So you take this out and then this fills up with snow. And then what I do is uh, I measure the weight of the snow. And then there's the snow water equivalent that you calculate out. And uh, so I have weighed this, uh, this measuring tube. It's 459 grams. So when I weigh that I subtract 459 grams and do my calculations. And it works the same for measuring rain. So all these recordings that I take, there's a website on the Coco Ross website. It's the Coco Ross website. And again, Coco Ross is an acronym for Community Collaborative Rain and Hail Snow. So uh, anyways, I go on that website and I record this data every day. And it's used all over Canada and the United States and other countries where this system is in place to uh, help predict uh, like drought or flood conditions or weather patterns, things like that. So although you don't see any reports from Coco Ross on the five o'clock news and the weather and whatnot, it is important data that we're collecting. And there's hundreds of these uh, Coco Ross stations located throughout Eastern Canada, Central Canada, and Western Canada, and all through mainland uh, continental USA and even in Alaska so it's good it's interesting every morning you can go on and you can look and see like how much snow they got in Alaska or Hawaii <laughs> not that it snows in Hawaii but you know things like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this the uh, edge of this miter right on top of the gauge Let's screw it in here Plum, plum, that's plum, Bob. That's funny. And then, and that locks on there. Now the top of the rain gauge is four and a half feet, so we're well within specs there. Okay, so then this just lifts off of there. Now, the beauty of this uh, mounting bracket is, it looks like I can mount it sideways, just like that. So let's go do that. Now, the thing you need to do is make sure that this is plumb, and on my weather gauge, my weather station, there's a centering bubble, so I'm going to get that mounted on here and go with that bubble. So on the gauge, there's the bubble right there. You can see it right there. So I'm just going to stick that on there. Right there. Oh, gone. that's close. The way this gauge works is uh, there's what's called a tipping cup inside here. And as the rain goes into this uh, collection area, it'll drip inside there and it'll fill a cup. When the cup gets so full, it tips over. And when it tips over, it spills the water out and the other side fills up and it spills the water out. Uh, the cup is calibrated, of course, so the number of times it tips back and forth calculates directly to the amount of rain we're receiving. It also has a, a solar cell uh, because inside this there's a little fan that will run in the hot sunny days to blow over the uh, temperature sensor to try to uh, eliminate uh, errors in temperature readings. And then of course the anemometer sits up here and the wind gauge 
down below. Okay, we, uh, we're going to position this weather gauge on our mounting bracket and it has to face due north. So I have my phone here with a compass, <laughs> compass app on it. So just to make sure I'm not influenced by any kind of magnetic magnetism around that, I see that uh, north is about right there. So if I position this on top of the gauge, north didn't move a whole lot. So there's north. And then that'll lock this facing north, which is what I want. Alrighty. So there we have it. One five function weather gauge mounted. So uh, there we have it in the background there. I guess you can see all three of them. So my rain gauge at the end, the ET gauge in the middle, and the uh, weather station gauge here. Right there. So collecting all this weather information, I find it interesting. And if you do too, and if you're interested in maybe uh, getting involved in it, check out the Coco Ross website. It's cocoross.net. C O C O R A H S dot net. It's an interesting site. It's free to join. Uh, you have to buy yourself a rain gauge, and if you want the evapo transpiration, the ET gauge, you'd have to buy that too. And uh, that gauge is expensive. It's about well, I don't know, it's expensive. A lot of money. I think it was over $400. But the rain gauge to get started is all you need, really. And that's about 50 Anyways, check them out. And also, you can go on that site and you can check. They have all the weather stations they report in each day between 7 and 8 in the morning. And you can get uh, readings for the amount of snow in the area, the amount of rain, things like that. And uh, my station is CAN-NS-103. That's my station number, C-A-N-N-S-103. Okay, hope you enjoyed this little video. Take care, enjoy the weather, and, uh, you know, get yourself a ring gauge, start monitoring it. <laughs> Click like if you like the video. Click subscribe if you want to help me out and get my channel going. And uh, we'll talk to you.